You don't have a sex drive, got no energy, sore, achy joints, muscles look flat. Everything in life just feels gray. Oh, did I mention you don't have a sex drive? To develop ourselves more, we need to recognize symptoms and health ramifications of having low estrogen. If it's inadequate, you're going to have poor cognitive function when you're working. Collagen synthesis is decreased, resulting in dry skin. Your cholesterol numbers won't be looking good, high LDL and low HDL. And when estradiol is low, SHBG is low because they both go in tandem together. So you're gonna find it hard to stay hard. But if you raise your estrogen, you're going to sort out your SHBG and that'll fix things. Estrogen is the main driver of your libido. No estrogen, you are pretty much asexual. And the definition of asexual is experiencing no sexual feelings or desires, not feeling any sexual attraction to anyone. If the sex drive is still off at this point, we'd need to look at DHEA, pregnenolone, and progesterone concentrations. Personally, I've had my estrogen through the roof, triple figures, down through the floorboards, single digits, and also at that sweet spot. But how do you know that you found that sweet spot between the androgens and the estrogens? Hmm, how do I put this? Your equipment. What? Yeah, that's gonna give you the answers for everything. So when you're in that sweet spot, you're waking up with morning wood. When it's time to perform, you don't have ED. And this is of course based on my own experience looking at my own blood work. That's how I know I'm in that sweet spot. Personally, I feel good at 35 to 55 picograms per milliliter when I'm on my cruise phase. With that in mind, we need to consider the ideal sex hormone ranges for libido and your well-being. So the testosterone needs to be 18 to 13 times more than the estrogen, and that goes very well on a cruise phase. Depends on other hormones, the testosterone, DHT, progesterone, testosterone, etc. Because at this point, when you're in a cruise, TRT or maintenance or whatever, your testosterone dosage is going to be low. Currently, I'm cruising on 200 milligrams a week. So the requirement for an aromatized inhibitor is very, very low. And you can get away with using calcium deglucurate and DIM because they're both gonna help you metabolize estrogen. For those that can tolerate high estrogen, don't have a tendency for gyno and can control their prolactin levels, you can actually go up to 100 picograms per milliliter. However, the safer range and what I prefer is 75. I like to use aromacin to keep my levels in check when I'm on a mass building phase because I see less serum effects on my lipid levels when I'm trying to manage my estrogen. As Arimidex is not something that is great for your lipids. In this phase, I'm not using lots of anabolics. I go up to a gram maximum and I allow the food to facilitate the anabolism. Here it's best to keep those estrogen levels suppressed to a degree. This is automatically going to happen if you're smart with your choice of anabolic agents. Primabolin, marsh Winstrol, Anavar, Winstrol will all give you serum estradiol reduction automatically without the use of an AI. I recommend keeping your estrogen at 30 to 40 in this cutting phase. If you decide you're not lean enough in certain areas, it might be time to bring it down to 25. If you're using testosterone or any DHD derivative, below 75 picograms per milliliter is definitely appropriate for you. But if you're using a 19 nor, you want to keep your serum estradiol levels lower, 50 to 55 max. These progesterone compounds in your system are gonna elevate your prolactin. And now you've got that triple assault going on. High estradiol, high prolactin, high progesterone, the perfect storm for gyno. And on top of that, if you're using growth hormone, you're going to be stimulating the prolactin receptor. You're basically stuffed. Look, this stuff is very powerful. One milligram every other day, it's like taking a space shuttle to go down to the corner shop. And once a space shuttle has crashed, it's not an overnight fix. In most cases, guys will crash their estrogen using an astrazole. Arimidex and astrazole are the same thing. So let's be smart about this. Get yourself a pill cutter. A quarter of a pill per week, 0.25 milligrams will work perfectly. The take home here is never nuke your hormones. If you overdo it, your androgen receptors are going to lose sensitivity and your muscles are going to look flat. So we've crashed our estrogen levels. Oh bugger. Add more good fats into your diet. When I crashed my estrogen, I had test prop, D-bolt and HCG on hand. This helped me make a very fast recovery. If you've just got some D-bolt, take 10 milligrams in the morning, 10 in the evening, that should bring you back to life and do it for three days 
then go get your blood work. It does take generally two to four weeks, but it depends on what you took and what you did to crash your levels. And it's conditional to the guy's genetics if he converts testosterone to estrogen at a high or a low rate. But overall, it could take six weeks to recover completely, and that's via blood work. So for a beginner, it's one of those things that is a little bit tricky to get right in their first cycle, because E2 levels are going to drastically differ from person to person. If you need help and guidance that's personalized to you, reach out. Look in the description box below, you're gonna see a link. Hit that link and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Next video coming up is one of my personal favorites. It's called Steroids and the Matrix. Society does not want you to be jacked, ripped, strong and confident. It's worth a watch, fellas. Front double by. Noticing that dryness, now the decker is gone. And I'll see you in two seconds, brother.